The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello, and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. My name is James, and on this show, we talk about the equipment found on your electronics workbench. On a DMM, I am not sure which mode gets used more, voltage or continuity. What I do know is that a lot of people do not understand how continuity mode works. Like all things in engineering, it isn't magic. So let's take an in-depth look behind this little beep and what it is telling you. One of the first things I do when I get back a new PCB from the fab is check the power rails for shorts, which is where the multimeter's continuity mode comes in. Some meters have a place on the dial for it, and some you go into resistance mode and then press a button to select it. The icon is usually some kind of sound looking thing. Whenever the meter detects a short, it beeps, which in this case is bad because I am measuring the VCC or 5 volt pin and ground. So this PCB has a direct short. We need to figure out why that board measures a short, but first, before we get to that, let's step back and talk about how continuity mode works. In short, a continuity test checks for a complete circuit path. The important thing to know about this mode is that it is a power test. The DMM supplies a current and measures the voltage. It uses Ohm's law to determine the resistance value. So you might be asking, but then why have a special mode? Why not just measure resistance? Well, you could, and some meters do exactly that. For example, on my bench meter, you can define what resistance you want the meter to treat as a short. Now, there are at least two reasons that meters have this separate function. The first is because it is a low resistance measurement with no automatic ranging, so that it is very fast. And the second is that wonderful beeping sound. Notice that on this handheld, the meter shows the resistance while making the measurement. My old meter from college shows voltage. Just to make the point, let's use a scope to see how these work. Here, I have hooked up a second meter to measure current and a scope to measure the voltage drop. When in continuity mode and with the probes connected to nothing, the meter puts out about one volt. When I touch the leads together, the voltage drops down to a few millivolts and the current is around 316 microamps. But did you notice there's no beep? Well, remember, the meter can measure resistance while doing continuity. And if we look, we can see that the meter measuring current has added 100 ohms in series with the probes measuring resistance, which it does not consider a short. So let's get that one out of here and get back to our beeps. And then we can get back to our failed boards. Remember that VCC and ground are shorted together. As a next step, I checked out other VCC and ground pins to see if the problem exists everywhere, which it does. This big area is for the TLC5940 chip. Looking at its datasheet, the VCC and ground pins are in the middle. And they are shorted here too. But wait, check this out. The ground plane is touching both pins. Turns out this short is 100% my fault. When I designed the PCB, I accidentally put a power plane on top of the ground plane. The design rule check, or DRC, did indicate that there was a short, but I did not make the connection in my head and I thought it was a bug. It was not. So to use this board, I would have to cut all of the VCC lines and then wire them with bodge wires. Or I could just make a new revision and not have the problem at all. Now VCC and ground measures nothing or OL since they are completely open. On a blank PCB, continuity mode is great for looking for a short or other issues with just the board. But what happens when there are components on the board? Well, first we need to see how different components affect this measurement mode. You always need to remember that the resistance or continuity mode supplies a small voltage and a current. When you are measuring a resistor, this current creates a voltage which lets us measure the resistance. Now, pay very close attention when I measure this electrolytic capacitor. See, when I first touched the lead, the meter beeped, but then it measured an open. But when I measured this film capacitor, the meter only displays open. Let's think about why this happens. When you apply a voltage to a capacitor, it starts to charge up. 
the inrush current of a discharge capacitor can be high enough that the meter initially sees a short circuit. The electrolytic is large enough to measure this inrush. However, the film capacitor is so small, the meter doesn't even notice it. So, be careful when using continuity mode to diagnose either a capacitor or a circuit with capacitors. If you measure a direct short through a cap, then there is likely a problem. For example, like when I initially put this film capacitor into the breadboard, like this. Let me know over on the Element 14 community if you can see the problem. Next, let's take a look at a simple board to see what happens when there are components in the way. This board is called a bias T. With the help of some passive components, it adds a DC voltage to an RF signal that can be used to power an amplifier. To prove that the board works, on the input, I'm connecting a signal generator that injects a 250 MHz signal. The output is being connected to the spectrum analyzer, where we'll set it up to measure at 250 MHz, and we see a spur. So let's see what happens with the multimeter. After I disconnect the board, because remember, this is a powered measurement, the DMM measures an open between the connectors. So what is going on here? We know there is continuity. The spectrum analyzer proved it. Looking close at the board, there is a capacitor in the middle of the trace. From each signal pin to the capacitor terminal, there is a short. But just like we saw earlier, capacitors block DC. So if we are testing a circuit board that has DC blocking or coupling capacitors on the traces, you will not see a short. Keep in mind that coupling and decoupling capacitors are different. Decoupling capacitors are in parallel to most signals, while coupling capacitors or blocking caps are in series. So if capacitors block the DMM's DC measurement, what happens with inductors? It just so happens that these two gray components are surface mount inductors. And as you can see, the meter measures them as short. Caps and inductors really are polar opposites. By the way, remember the LCR meter from a previous episode? It uses an AC signal for its measurement and it sees about 42 ohms of impedance between the SMA connectors. So while it does not have a continuity mode, we can use it to see that there is an AC path where the DMM says there's an open, at least to DC. Before closing the topic, we do need to address how active components like transistors and ICs get measured. For example, on this Arduino Uno, if I measure the voltage regulator, it looks like two of the pins are shorted and the rest are open. But are they? We have to remember that an integrated circuit is just that, a circuit. Inside of a voltage regulator are a bunch of resistors, transistors, and diodes. So the DMM can only tell which pins are shorted together. And sometimes those pins are shorted on the PCB, but not inside of the chip. For example, on the ATmega328 from the UNO, it has a digital VCC and an analog VCC. The chip by itself shows an open between them. But when the chip goes into an Arduino board, the pins are now magically shorted together. Well, not magically, ingenuitedly. Anyway, with a populated circuit board, you really have to think about what you are probing. You can find which traces connect between components, but you cannot usually see what goes through them. So what does this mean? Well, if it is a two-layer board, you can carefully look at the traces, like how we noticed the ground plane issue on the first board. Otherwise, you need to have a schematic so you can tell where there should and should not be connections. Whether you are relatively new to electronics or you feel confident in your DMM skills, I have a challenge for you. Grab a board with a schematic, like an Arduino, and see if you can trace out the PCB's connections. Let me know over on the Element 14 community what board you looked at, and let me know if you run into any signals or measurements you didn't expect. For now, it is time for me to get back to ohming out measurements on my electronics workbench.